250 tons. Zero recovery. Engineers are furious. SpaceX just revealed they're ready to throw away $90 million starships like trash cans. While NASA burns billions perfecting reusability, Musk drops a bombshell. Expendable mode is an option. This decision could kill every competitor overnight. We're talking about launching payloads so massive that no other rocket on Earth can even attempt it. But here's what's driving engineers absolutely insane. What if this wasteful strategy is actually SpaceX's secret weapon to dominate space forever? Let's dive right in. Here's the brutal truth no one talks about. Earth's gravity makes reusable rockets barely possible. We're living on the edge of physics, and engineers worldwide know it. If gravity were just 10% stronger, reusable rockets would be impossible. Just 10% weaker? They'd be easy. When Starship attempts re-entry at 17,000 miles per hour, the physics become terrifying. Energy doesn't just scale with velocity, it scales with velocity squared. Double the speed? You get four times the heat. That energy turns into a 3,000 degree inferno, hot enough to melt steel instantly. But what if SpaceX simply doesn't try to survive it? Strip away everything designed for re-entry. No heat shield tiles. That's 15 tons gone. No landing legs. Another 5 tons. No header tanks for landing fuel. 10 more tons. Suddenly, 30 tons of dead weight becomes 30 tons of cargo space. The numbers are staggering. Reusable Starship carries 150 tons to orbit. Expendable version? 250 tons. That's not just better. That's revolutionary. Here's the mind-bending part. Skylab, America's first space station, weighed 76 tons. An expendable Starship could launch three Skylabs in one shot. The entire International Space Station weighs 420 tons. Starship could build it in just two flights. But here's what's driving engineers absolutely insane. When asked about expendable mode, Elon Musk shocked the industry. Expendable upper stage may or may not fly, but it is an option. The king of reusability just admitted throwing away rockets might be genius. Why would the man who revolutionized rocket reuse consider this? The answer lies in a crisis no one saw coming. SpaceX faces an impossible production bottleneck. They need to launch 12,000 Starlink satellites, and they need them in orbit fast. But here's the terrifying reality. Even at peak production, they can't build reusable Starships fast enough to meet demand. Each reusable mission requires months of refurbishment. Heat shield tiles must be individually inspected and replaced. Landing systems need complete overhauls. The turnaround time is killing their launch cadence. Expendable starships? Build it, fuel it, launch it. Done. No refurbishment, no tile replacement, no complex landing systems to repair. The production bottleneck disappears overnight, but there's an even darker secret driving this decision. Current Mars missions are pathetically slow because they can't carry enough fuel. Europa Clipper launched in 2024, but won't reach Jupiter until 2030. Six years of travel time because it needs multiple gravity assists to build up speed. With 250 tons of capacity, expendable Starship changes everything. Pack it with enough propellant for direct, high-energy trajectories. Instead of years crawling through space, we're talking months of direct flight. Recent studies suggest Mars in just 90 days. That's not science fiction. That's mathematical reality when you have enough fuel. But here's the part that's terrifying competitors. While every other rocket company bets billions on reusability, SpaceX could dominate by doing the exact opposite. Saturn V cost $1.2 billion per launch in today's money. NASA's SLS costs $4.1 billion per mission. Even a wasteful, expendable Starship at $90 million would be 45 times cheaper than SLS. The math is so absurd, it's insulting to other rocket companies. Think about it. SpaceX could throw away a $90 million rocket and still undercut everyone by massive margins. That's not just competitive advantage. That's market annihilation. Building expendable Starships is dramatically simpler. No heat shield tiles requiring precision placement. No complex landing systems integration. No header tanks or aerodynamic control surfaces. Manufacturing time could drop 60%. 
SpaceX is building gigafactories in Texas and Florida. With simplified, expendable versions, they could produce one rocket every few days. That's not just fast. That's industrial-scale production that's never existed. While Boeing takes years to build one SLS, SpaceX could crank out dozens of starships in the same time frame. It's like comparing handcrafted furniture to assembly line production. The U.S. Air Force is watching this closely, and they're terrified, in a good way. Expendable Starship could deliver 250 tons anywhere on Earth in under 40 minutes. A Boeing 747 freighter carries 113 tons. Starship carries more than twice that, faster than any aircraft, to any point on the planet. This isn't just space technology, this is military supremacy. While other countries struggle with small satellites, the U.S. could deploy massive payloads globally in minutes. The strategic implications are overwhelming. Here's where the story takes an unexpected twist. SpaceX's new Raptor 3 engine looks impossibly simple. So simple that industry experts thought it was fake. ULA's CEO, Tori Bruno, couldn't believe the first photos were real. But it's not simple. It's revolutionary. By integrating components through advanced 3D printing, SpaceX eliminated thousands of parts. No external heat shields needed. No complex cooling systems. Just raw, efficient power. Each Raptor 3 produces 280 tons of thrust. 30% more than the original. But here's the shocking part. It weighs 170 pounds less, more power, less weight, simpler construction. Picture this, your Blue Origin, ULA, or any rocket company. You've spent decades perfecting reusable technology. Suddenly, SpaceX announces expendable mode and still beats your performance by massive margins. Your business model just became obsolete, not because SpaceX perfected reusability, but because they proved it wasn't necessary to dominate the market. This is the engineering earthquake rippling through the industry. SpaceX isn't changing the rules. They're proving the rules everyone followed were wrong. SpaceX's human landing system is already semi-expendable. It won't return to Earth. It becomes a permanent lunar outpost. This creates a fascinating paradox. Wasteful, expendable rockets actually enable permanent infrastructure. Instead of bringing rockets back, they become building blocks for lunar civilization. Every thrown away starship becomes foundation for humanity's expansion into space. Here's the final revelation. Expendable starship might accelerate Mars colonization, not slow it down. Current plans require perfect reusability to make Mars economical. But what if SpaceX uses expendable cargo ships to build massive infrastructure first? Send 20 expendable starships filled with equipment and habitat modules. They land and become the foundation of the first Mars city. Only then do you send precious reusable crew vehicles. This flips Mars strategy upside down. Instead of perfecting round trips, establish overwhelming capability first, then add reusability for human transport. Recent starship test failures revealed the re-entry problem is harder than expected. Flight 7's spectacular explosion showed Block 2 isn't ready yet. Meanwhile, NASA needs human landing system operational by 2026. SpaceX can't wait for perfect reusability. They might be forced into expendable mode just to meet contract obligations. Once they prove expendable works reliably, why return to reusability complexity for certain missions? This is Spaceflight's iPhone moment. Just like smartphones made cameras and GPS devices obsolete overnight, Expendable Starship could make every other rocket irrelevant. Companies that spent fortunes on next-generation rockets find themselves competing against a vehicle that throws away its upper stage and still outperforms everything else. The most shocking part? SpaceX is doing it by embracing the supposedly outdated expendable approach everyone abandoned. They're not just disrupting the industry. They're annihilating it with yesterday's technology executed at tomorrow's scale. Engineers worldwide are asking themselves, if SpaceX can dominate the market by throwing rockets away, what does that say about everything we thought we knew about spaceflight? The answer is keeping rocket engineers awake at night. Because if SpaceX is right, the entire industry spent decades optimizing for the wrong thing. And there's no coming back from that realization. So here we are. SpaceX has engineers worldwide questioning everything they thought they knew about rockets. 
The company that made reusability cool is now considering throwing rockets away and somehow making that revolutionary too. We've seen how 250 tons to orbit changes everything. How expendable mode could accelerate Mars colonization faster than perfect reusability. How this decision might obliterate every competitor overnight. But here's what keeps me up at night. What if this is just the beginning? What if expendable Starship isn't SpaceX abandoning reusability, but preparing for something even bigger we haven't imagined yet? The space industry is about to split into two worlds. Those who adapt to this new reality and those who become history. The question isn't whether SpaceX will succeed. The question is, will anyone else survive what's coming? If you're as fascinated by this space revolution as I am, hit that subscribe button. Because trust me, the biggest surprises are still ahead. Next week, we're diving into SpaceX's secret Mars timeline that NASA doesn't want you to know about. What do you think? Is expendable mode genius or madness? Drop your thoughts below, because this debate is just getting started. Engineers watched in horror as SpaceX ripped off hundreds of heat shield tiles from Starship 37. Flight 10 is make or break for Mars missions, yet they just removed the only protection against 1,600 degrees Celsius death plasma. This looks insane until you realize Elon's master plan. He's testing something that could replace fragile tiles forever. What's this game-changing secret? Let's dive right in. Picture this, January 15th, 2025. Ship 37 rolls out to Pad 1, and seasoned SpaceX engineers stop dead in their tracks. Hundreds of ceramic heat shield tiles, each worth $30 and designed to survive 1,600 degrees Celsius plasma, had vanished overnight. But here's what sent chills down their spines. These weren't random tiles. They were strategically removed from the most critical areas. The hull sections that faced direct plasma impact in all four flap areas where previous ships had literally melted into fireworks. A worker could pry these tiles off with nothing more than a kitchen knife. If they're this fragile on the ground, what happens when 28,000 kilometers per hour re-entry forces hit them? The math is terrifying. At those speeds, even a single missing tile creates a death zone where 1,600 degrees Celsius plasma can penetrate and melt through steel in seconds. So why would Elon deliberately create hundreds of these death zones? The answer reveals the most audacious engineering gamble in SpaceX history. Flight 10 isn't just another test. It's make or break for SpaceX's entire Mars colonization timeline. Here's what most people don't realize. Starship was designed to eventually replace Falcon 9 for satellite launches, but no flight has ever reached the crucial deployment altitude. Flight 9 barely made it to 196 kilometers, still 34 kilometers short of the minimum 230 kilometer sweet spot where Starlink satellites need deployment. Even worse, pressure issues caused violent shaking that turned the ship into a death trap. The PEZ doors opened, but engine failures meant only one third functioned. Mission, catastrophic failure. For Flight 10, SpaceX needs to prove they can hit 210 plus kilometers and deploy satellites flawlessly. Once deployed, these satellites use ion engines running on Krypton gas to climb to their final 550 kilometer operational orbit. A journey that takes weeks of precision maneuvering. But here's the mind bending puzzle. Removing heat shield tiles doesn't help reach higher altitudes. If anything, it guarantees the ship won't survive re-entry. So what's Elon's real end game? Remember those white circles observers spotted on some ships? They're not random markings. They're test zones for the most revolutionary breakthrough in aerospace history. Metallic heat shield tiles made from exotic alloys with names like SX500 and Inconel super alloys. SpaceX's employees aren't just engineers. They're the world's most advanced metallurgists. They've developed materials so exotic that even NASA doesn't know their exact composition. These metal tiles can withstand temperatures that would vaporize traditional ceramics. And here's the kicker. They're reusable up to 50 times. But testing revolutionary technology requires pushing the old system past its breaking point. 
Those hundreds of missing ceramic tiles, they're creating controlled failure zones to map exactly where the current system fails under real plasma assault. Every previous test flight that exploded gave SpaceX zero re-entry data. Flight 10 might be their first chance to gather real-world intelligence about what happens when protection fails. Data worth more than the entire $3 billion vehicle. Here's where things get absolutely insane. Those exposed areas aren't just testing metal tiles. They're testing active cooling systems that could make Starship virtually indestructible. Picture supercooled methane or liquid oxygen flowing through microscopic channels carved into the metal tiles using 3D printing technology so advanced that Musk claims they have the most advanced 3D metal printing in the world. This isn't science fiction. It's happening right now. During re-entry, these channels absorb massive amounts of heat while the cryogenic fluids boil away, creating a self-regenerating cooling system. Combined with metallic tiles, this could eliminate the post-flight inspection nightmare that plagues every Starship return. But here's the brutal reality. Testing this system requires exposing the spacecraft to conditions that should destroy it. If it survives, it proves Starship is ready for Mars. If it doesn't, well, that's still valuable data. Let's talk about what's really at stake here. When Ship 37 hits Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, it will face forces that have destroyed every spacecraft humanity has ever built, except for a precious few that had perfect heat shields. Astronauts repeatedly say re-entry is the most terrifying experience imaginable. The plasma surrounding the spacecraft reaches temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun. The mechanical stress is so intense it can rip apart solid steel. The only way to survive is to slow down gradually through atmospheric friction while maintaining perfect control. You might wonder, why not just fire engines in reverse? The brutal physics are unforgiving. The energy required to decelerate from orbital velocity would need more fuel than the entire rocket can carry. It's physically impossible. So here's Elon's calculated madness. If Ship 37 can somehow survive re-entry with missing tiles, it proves Starship is tough enough for missions where backup and rescue aren't options, like the nine-month journey to Mars. The pressure is crushing. ULA just nailed their third Vulcan mission, proving they're not just surviving, they're thriving in the commercial